This episode of the Craftsman Online Podcast is sponsored by Bricks Masons. From elegant Masonic rings that showcase your commitment to our craft, to finely crafted regalia and apparel that honor your tradition, Bricks Masons delivers quality and craftsmanship that truly stands out. Shop now at BricksMasons.com and use promo code CRAFTSMAN to receive free shipping with your first order. The comments, opinions, and views shared during this program are of those individual Freemasons and do not reflect the official position of a Grand Lodge, Concordant Body, Appendant Body, Masonic Authority, or CraftsmanOnline.com. Welcome to the Craftsman Online Podcast, the only five-star rated Masonic podcast endorsed by the Grand Lodge of New York. Hello, it's Brother Michael Arce, co-founder of CraftsmanOnline.com. You've joined us for a crossover episode on the Freemasons podcast as we bring in the host of the Freemasons podcast, Right Worshipful George Mudry. Welcome to the Craftsman Online podcast, my brother. Thank you. Does it feel different when it's just you and you don't have the co-hosts and your your partners with you? When when I do a podcast just by myself, it's it's a little bit more difficult because I have to kind of come up with my own material. And uh, one of the, my biggest things that I had a problem with and struggled with was uh, my use of um. I would always say um, 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 um. And uh, initially I started editing it out when I would record by myself because I just, I don't ever listen to any of my own material. I don't listen to any podcast, but I don't listen to my own, especially because I hate the way I talk. I, 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 like, I'm very critical of myself. So Joe and Ken are here. It's actually, it's, it's a lot easier. It flows. It's more of a conversation rather than me just giving an infomercial, if you will. That's one of the things that, you know, I, I really like about it is that it's, it's that authentic, real in the moment feel like if you've got a lodge and you're fortunate enough to have a bar in the lodge, these are the conversations. This is how brothers talk after the meeting in the meeting. Of course, we are stuffy with our old English and our ritual and very con- construct and form where we are, but outside of lodge, we're, we're dudes and we're talking about real life. And that's, that's crossed over into your podcast, which I think is appealing because there's enough of podcasts out there that provide that light or the deeper thought or the, this or the, that, and that's what yours is, just that splash of of brotherhood, I would say. For me, the whole Masonic experience, it's not what you do in Lodge. Mm. It's part of it. It's what happens after Lodge. That's also part of it, too. That's your fellowship. That's, that's you know, the Lodge meeting is not just your 7 to 9.30 or whatever. It's what happens afterward, too. It's the conversations you're having with your brothers and getting to know them. And and that's what makes the brotherhood is getting to know their lives and their children and, the, and, and their, you know, their jobs. And that's what that's part of the Masonic experience as well. Not just, you know, standing there and repeating ritual. You know, the ritual part, part of it, to me, is is a conduct of how you're to act, you know, to the profane world uh and by that or the outside world uh, i don't even know if i like the word profane but i always think it's that they're swearing or something <laughs> like they're illiterates you know i don't like that we use that word it's like you know going into dunkin donuts and in in giving the cashier sh- part of my french because they gave you the wrong change back like mm. so you're, you're acting an act in front of everybody and but you got a masonic tattoo in your arm yep that's that's your conduct that's that's what the ritual is telling you not to do when you're behind closed doors up in lodge in the back room smoking a cigar and drinking a beer and having a good time you get what i'm saying like just let your hair down if you will uh and that's part of the experience as well and i think that it was important when i did the podcast that or when i started the podcast even now um people who want to join freemasonry need to understand that and i believe masons should also understand that as well uh, I've talked about my lodge. Um, when I first came in, all the members were over 70. I was 20. I was 26. You were a very young man. I was young. I was the only one. <laughs> mm. That's a lonely place too. Very lonely. And I basically said, this lodge is dying. You're a good guy. You've been my friend for, it was my, my brother, worship brother, Phil. You know, we, we brought in younger guys and we're, we're where we are now. We brought, life back to the craft i am at a point now where i've pretty much stepped away um and i let i flourish 
And I think that's important for a past master or the older brethren. And I consider myself an older brethren. Doesn't you have to be an age, it could be an experience. When the lodge is moving on its own and you don't need to be there anymore, let it go. Go and enjoy it. Let them figure out, let the younger guys figure out what needs to be done next. They're never going to know how to do something unless they get a chance to do it. It's kind of our job to set them up and teach them the way that it's done, the process. And then, as you said, the important lesson is take a step back. And I think, yeah, a lot of brothers suffer with that. They they get burnout. They get frustrated. Um, they get bitter to a certain extent. And then you wonder why they stop coming. I've always, you know, as someone that's watched the chairs rotate, I'm like, how come the immediate past masters like immediately never come back to lunch for like two or three years? Why is that? <laughs> I've done it. Uh, it's the Masonic vacation. I call it after you get out of the big chair or whether it's a district deputy or a master, you're like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm going on vacation for a little while. But the trick is though, when they go on that Masonic vacation, how do you get them back? So brother George, I want to get back to the podcast. Cause one of the bits that you guys do that hooked me as a listener early on was the alternate universe. And as you said, like this podcast is, is meant for men that are interested in getting in masonry. And a lot of the times, what I think one of the things that draws the attention to Freemasonry is all this conspiracy theory. So basically your alternate universe is like the ultimate, like what if game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And normally when you guys play this, I imagine it's like a jeopardy like screen where they're category boop, boop, boop. And then you spin a wheel and it lands on something. And then that's the episode. That's where you go. Yes and no. Um, so one, I'll, I'll admit I'm a huge dork. Um, and I like watching movies and I'm watching the purge movie and I'm like, I wonder what would happen in a Masonic lodge. Like, is that where we just, figure out who's going to buy the dinner next is that how <laughs> I like the ultimate purge <laughs> you know I'm watching a movie and I, I popped into my head I'm like I wonder how Masons would act if this was an actual thing and that's why I just I need to have an alternate universe I need to you know, we're going to play a game of like what if what if this actually happened? And that's how it started. It's a cool thought sandbox that you guys have created. So uh, I brainstormed, me and my staff of one. I got five topics. I, did, I haven't shared any of these with you. Um, and I'll let you determine how you want to play the game. I can share all five topics. We can bang them out. Um, I'll list all five of them. You pick the one that's most appealing to you or gets a laugh, however you want to play. Do them all. Why not? If I choose one, then I'm going to be driving home going, Damn it, what were the other ones? <laughs> so topic number one, uh, this is probably the lightest, most fun one. Uh, the alternate reality is Freemasons are secretly controlling the world one pancake breakfast at a time. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, so we're going full Alex Jones on me here. Okay. Oof. This is a good one. Uh, so if we were controlling everything, our lodge can't figure out what the hell they're having for the next freaking meal. So I find it highly unlikely to be all symbiotic and everything would be mm -hmm. peaches and rainbows and whatnot. I don't think it would be at a blue lodge level. And I'll say this because, you know, for those, I don't know if you have listeners abroad, but again, the United States Masonic Grand Lodges are not set up like anywhere else. Every Grand Lodge is standalone. I don't think you would get a you'd have to have some sort of a grand lodge of the United States of America, which George Washington many, many, many years ago, put a squash to. So, and I don't think you'd get all the grand masters together to figure out who's going to run this whole goat rodeo, because I mean, we have state grand lodges that don't get along with one another for a multitude of reasons. Connecticut was one of the first to endorse Prince Hall. We actually, we were the first to endorse Prince Hall. There's some grand lodges that don't. Scottish right level, potentially, um, because you have northern and southern Masonic jurisdiction. And but I mean, it didn't I mean, northern and southern jurisdictions didn't work out too well in 1860. So I don't know if that's <laughs> uh, 1860, you know, Civil War, you know. I, so I don't know if Scottish right would be able to pull it off. So if I was to make a and again, this is all hypothetical. If I was to make a somebody's controlling it all. It would have to be the grand encampment of Knights Templar because they're the only organization in Freemasonry that is the entire country. 
Shriners, they don't get along too fast in their cars, so that's not gonna <laughs> I'm joking. Um be the world's largest drinking party. <laughs> I mean, Congress would be fun with all the clowns going ear, ear, on their nose. As for controlling the country, um, that's a tough one because you would have to revamp the entire government in a sense, because it's close. There are some similarities between the U.S. government and Masonic ritual and Masonic conduct or, uh, within Lodge, but it is totally different. We are a democratic republic. A Masonic Lodge, I jokingly refer to as a dictatorship. Could it happen? Um, no. Could it have happened in 1943 19, to 1945 when you had two sitting presidents that were 33rd degree Masons and you know Franklin Delano Roosevelt and Harry Truman? I mean, the U.S. was at the height of its power and peak. That would have been the time it would have happened, in my personal opinion. So in modern day, no, not going to happen. Good answer. Good answer. Uh, second alternate universe, we travel a little bit further back in time. Uh, what if... The Americans lost the Revolutionary War. It would have been terrible because I don't like tea. I'm a coffee guy. Uh, <laughs> we lost the Revolutionary War. I, I mean, Masonically speaking, I think some of the problem that we have with the grand jurisdictions may or may not be ironed out because we'd all be under the United Grand Lodge of England, perhaps. Right. I mean, if we lost the American Revolutionary War... You obviously would have had the founding fathers and the first Congress, of who were many of them Masons and Washington's generals. Mm -hmm. They'd have been gone. Yeah. Uh, so I think, I mean, it would have been a trickle down effect. I mean, we have lodges here in Connecticut, and I'm sure in New York too, where we had founding fathers create lodges. I mean, we when Hiram in New Haven, founding fathers were on that charter. One of them was scratched off. We'll, we'll leave that one to interpretation. It's the man we don't speak of. He was a he was a traitor, but they, they his name was scratched off or ink blotted out. I think it was, but I think you'd have a lot of lodges that were created after the war by founding fathers that would not be in existence. I think ultimately masonry would still be the same. I mean, our ritual would be different, our grips and signs would be different. Because if you've ever met anybody from England, I don't know what they they're they're they do totally different things. So I think our ritual would be different, but I think ultimately we would we'd still be okay. We'd be all right. Hey, it's Brother Michael Arce for Bricks Masons. The Craftsman Online podcast is now sponsored by Bricks Masons. They're my favorite destination for all the Masonic needs I have. And for you, it could be Masonic apparel, maybe something nice for yourself, or a unique gift idea for a brother. I want to talk to you about the coolest, genuine leather bag you're ever going to see. Imagine being able to bring this into the office. Just $150.99 at BricksMasons.com. It is the Master Mason Blue Lodge briefcase. This thing is beautiful. And I know it's going to fit my MacBook Pro in here because it's over 16 inches wide, full green, genuine leather that is laser engraved. Yes, you can personalize this with your name and lodge number right there. You got a zip on the back pocket, a cool leather handle. You are going to look like a professional mason on the go with your new Master Mason Blue Lodge briefcase. See it now at BricksMasons.com. Visit BricksMasons.com and explore their extensive catalog and elevate your Masonic experience with style and substance. Plus, for our podcast listeners, use promo code CRAFTSMAN at checkout to enjoy free shipping with your first order. Hey, it's Brother Michael Arce. If you're enjoying this episode, I bet you'd enjoy it a lot more if you got to hear it early. And without this, the annoying commercials that come before, during, and after the Craftsman Online podcast, you can avoid all this and help out our show by just pledging $5 a month on Patreon and become a Craftsman Online podcast member. You get early access to weekly episodes, an ad-free listening experience, plus we get extra time with a lot of our guests featuring this one, even Brother George. You know, he's going to go pretty deep on some of his thoughts when it comes to Freemasonry and beyond. And coming soon, we're going to also be introducing you with virtual meet and greets with some of our favorite podcast guests. This is all just $5 a month. My brothers and friends, it's a great way to support the show. Know that all of the money we collect goes to support the production costs of producing the weekly episodes of the Craftsman Online podcast. And we thank you in advance. <music> Alternate universe where everything Dan Brown has written about when it comes to Freemasonry is true. 
All right. So if we're talking lost symbol, I want that guy. I want the guy's tattoos. That was the, the villain in that book. Because, <laughs> I mean, he had Jake and Boaz on the legs. He had the crown on his head. He was the eagle on his back and all kinds of And I'm reading the book. I'm like, that's so cool. I want to spend like $30,000 right now on tattoos. But uh, if everything was real. I, so the Dan Brown books, um, Da Vinci Code, are we talking about? Or are we talking specifically about lost symbol? Just to give a, a spoiler alert, brief synopsis of the book, it's about a uh, Robert Langdon comes in, he's investigating uh, a hand of the hand of mysteries that was in that was left in the center of the rotunda of the Capitol, um, trying to figure out the symbols, they end up going to a chamber of reflection downstairs, and they discover this little pyramid that's like a codex thing. And I can't remember exactly what he was after, but it was basically a guy who was a Mason that bought his way, made a large donation and bought his way into the 33rd degree, which we as Masons know right off the bat that that's not accurate. That's that's a complete falsehood. You can't buy your way into anything um, in Freemasonry, uh, with the exception is if you make a large donation to the Knights Templar Eye Foundation, you get the Sword of Honor. There's my plug. Um, <laughs> um, but you can't buy yourself into the 33rd degree. As a matter of fact, to my understanding, when I've talked to, uh, I'm a 32nd degree, but when I've asked about the 33rd degree, they're like, shh, don't even, don't, mm. we don't talk about it. Like, don't ask what it's about. Don't, because you'll never see it. It's an honorary degree that's given to you. If this, the, the villain in the book, um, if he actually joined Freemason, I'm pretty sure he'd be rooted out in the investigation committee within the first five minutes. You don't join masonry for malicious intent and personal gain. Like if you do, don't don't bother because you're going to be sadly disappointed. There's no money. There's no insurance policies. There's nothing that's going to better your station in life. You do this voluntarily to help others, not yourself. The Dan Brown universe wouldn't exist. Here's your next question. Uh, number four, alternate universe situation. The great architect of the universe is really Quato from Total Recall. <laughs> Uh, that's good can i tell you this was the moment i was waiting for i didn't want to show you what the list was because as my fingers were typing this i'm giggling like a squeak <laughs> well i mean i guess i should open my mind <laughs> yes <laughs> oh but who would be the host of it like who would be quato's host though I i'm gonna go with joe i mean it He's always wearing baggy long shirts. Like he's always, uh, I, I, in realistically, it was Ken. Uh, I mean, the minute he took his shirt off to go out in the sun, the quad would burst into flames. Um, uh, so if Quado is real, oh boy. Um, in that scenario, it's a lot like our Hermic legend, where it's an allegory, I believe, in an allegory, because Quato represents something. But then when you find out, was the whole experience that Schwarzenegger's character went through real or not? Was he dreaming? Was it, you know, man, that challenges everything. So what what if this great architect is really this little alien thing that has a host body that is really just kind of a Yoda that is looks like chewing gum? I mean, this this opens like Pandora's box of like, who is God? You know, if, if this, I mean, we always talk about God from the heavens and God came down and descended from the heavens. Uh, you know, um, I, I, I mean, you can go right into the Bible and say when God said, let us create man in our image, who the hell was he talking to? Mm. I mean, I've done the, the Lost Book of Enki episodes and I mean... The similarities between Sumerian culture and, and Christianity and, and Judaism, Buddhism, Islam is just it's mind boggling. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're really questioning who, who's who's God. Like if he was Quato, I mean, if you believe that little green men come down here and visit the planet and they're flying around in Tic Tacs and stuff, I, I guess anything's possible. Um, man, that would change our ritual, though. There definitely wouldn't be exposing the uh, naked right and left breasts. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> yeah, I I would just think like the question would the answer would be different to whence came you? Two weeks. Two weeks. <laughs> uh that's that's a that's a good one. Uh, that's kind of funny. Um, uh, God, I'm crying. That was funny. Um, I don't know. We really don't know who God is. So 
Well, you know, not not to put a bug in there, but uh, I just say, you know, future episode of the Freemasons podcast, I would be tuning in to find out what if Quato was really, you and I know this, and they would be hit upside the head, and that would be a fun one. All right, so here's also kind of a fun one, but I mean, talk about the roles being reversed. Alternate universe, what if Freemasonry is still the world's oldest sorority and men are trying to seek admittance into lodges. So now Freemasonry, not the ma- the oldest f- fraternity, but now the oldest sorority, roles reversed. All right, all right. Um, so we're talking about this, uh, I guess you're basically talking about this duality between should women be allowed into Freemasonry and or how would a man feel if there was a woman's only exclusive? Well, no, the, the, the whole story is based on a female perspective. Now we're as odd as it would be, we're trying to to join a sorority because they have the answers that have been in our hearts that we're trying to seek. And we have to try to knock on the door and say, can men have a place in Freemasonry? Because it's really a, a sorority now. A one. Total role reverse. I can't speak on other, other men. Uh, I can only speak on myself. Um, I'm not one of those people that believes everything needs to be all inclusive, which is good for you may not be good for him what's good for me may not be good for you you know what i mean like um for instance i'm never going to get into yale skull and bones why because i'm a dummy um i'm a jarhead i'm not smart so i can't feel impartial of how come i can't join like i I don't have the the right credentials for it nor would i even bother to ask i would never want to uh join something that you know is I mean, we're not talking about something that got started yesterday either, right? We're not talking about something that like, I'm going to make a boys only club and girls aren't allowed. Like this isn't like Charlie Brown and or you know, this has been around and it's 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 not even a, it's not a sexist thing. It's not a our fraternity's been around for a very long time. 1700 I think is 1707 is where they the official first writings are. But we know just like the mafia, they didn't just pop out of nowhere. Like they been, they were there beforehand. They just weren't recording it. So it's long. It's it's a tradition of it's it's, it's, it's a, and I think people need to not look at things that like they're so everything is negative. It's not negative. It's just this is something that's for us. And in case of this, uh, if it was a sorority, I don't think men should be allowed because it's it's been a tradition for a long time, and I wouldn't even try to. It'd be really cool that women would have an organization like that uh, exclusively for them. I think that would be great. I wish there was a, I don't know, I don't know if co-masonry is specifically all women, right? It's men and women, right? There are female masons and versions of female masonry where they still refer to each other as brother. Um, And their ritual is, from what I understand, pretty close to what we would practice, but that's in England. And I know that there's some actual female Masonic bodies or organizations that are here in the U S right. But yeah, I think the, and with you, I, I don't, I don't mean to jump in on your ultimate universe. But no, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. Like I've heard many, um, both pros and cons on both sides of the issue. Like, Hey, why would this be good as far as advancing frame masonry and preserving it for future generations? It would be a way to a possible solution to the membership decline if we let women in. And honestly, to me, not to sound sexist or as as a jerk, I would just say, I don't know too many women who are knocking on the door, trying to beat down the door to become a Freemason. Um, And I'm only speaking from my own personal experience, but I haven't met too many wives that when you ask or when you talk about going to lodge, their first question is, well, what time are you going to be home? That's usually the extent, at least in my house, as as to what it comes with Freemasonry. Just as that I've always made the statement that Freemasonry is not really right for every man and every man's not really right for Freemasonry. We're talking about esoteric in the truest sense that it's the smallest selectist group that see the value in something and it's special to them because they see the value in it. Others don't understand it. And then you could reverse or, or the way they are right now. Let's let's just talk about this. Uh, and I don't know what it is in your grand jurisdiction, but the, really the only thing that's really truly secretive here in Connecticut is the obligation. That's the true secret is the obligation that you're not supposed to talk about. So if we're talking about investigating candidate, how do you investigate? A fe- how do you invest or divest a female 
for the master mason degree. Right. Uh, I, that was the one question I asked. Now you have a room full of guy. Now you have a room full of guys with one female. Um, I'm not saying that masons aren't upstanding and right, but it could pose a serious problem legally and actually physically. There runs my problem. That, that's where things get really dicey. And what are you going to do? You're going to have legal. You're going to have legal. We, we don't do anything legal. I mean, we're not. We tell them get in the back room, get in the into the prep room, and all right, strip your clothes off. And it's like first they look at you like what, and then two minutes later they're like, uh, okay. <laughs> but there's no legal signing documents about like oh we're we're asking you. There's none of that stuff. It's a, it's a it's a it's a trust thing. The first time I saw the outfit, costume, whatever the profane term is for it, I'm like, um, can we get back to the jokes about me riding a goat around the room? Because I'd rather do that than put on these pajamas. This is weird. Yeah, right. <laughs> You're telling me George Washington walked around a room like this? Okay. So I, I just feel that you're running into a whole plethora of new problems by allowing that. Whether it's reversed in this alternate universe or not. I kind of have the viewpoint that it would be a lot like the uh, Wonder Woman movie where when Steve, you know, the pilot guy crashes and lands with, you know, Diana, the Wonder Woman at that time. And he's on the island of these amazing women that there's no man and the men are just kind of hunt down. And it's just that ultimate role reversal where we would just be like, you're talking about something, and not you, but just we are talking about something larger than, hey, Freemasonry isn't a fraternity, it's a sorority. But Kind of sadly for that to happen, just the outlook of traditional roles has has also been reversed. I would love to know how co-masonry does that. How do you do that? So now you have just the female going to the prep room with other females. Well, what if your co lodge or your co-freemasonry lodge is primarily all guys? Because I mean, we are probably we are all guys, you know. If you were to allow co-masonry, like and a female came up here and was like, Hey, I want to join your lodge. Well, how do you do that? It's a sticky situation that I feel, regardless if it's a fraternity or a sorority it, it it could it could pose a lot of extra stuff yeah and the other part of it is is that i've always you know as we're talking about i wonder what it would be like in co-masonry yeah. i wonder what it would be like because their story is it the same that we are following like symbolically building king solomon's temple but what about all the other biblical lessons that are kind of introduced or thoughts or concepts or ideas is it the same experience that we get and what's the meaning to them like does their third degree end the same way that ours does with just this unfinished kind of end to a story that you kind of have to spin and figure out on your own like what is it like? You know, did, I have a lot of questions. And do they serve green beans at dinner? Like, is that a common theme that would just run through? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Green beans and lemon chicken. Oh, my God. The two things that will make me walk out of a lodge meeting before it even starts. Don't get me wrong. There's not wrong with lemon chicken. But when you've had it 15 times in a row for the last month, it's like, oh, my God. Can we just do something else? Can we get ribs or something? This has been the Craftsman Online Podcast. Big thanks to my guest, Right Worshipful George Mudry, the host of the Freemasons Podcast, for coming on. If you've enjoyed our podcast and you want to hear more, you can tell Siri or Alexa to play the Craftsman Online Podcast. We're available on all streaming platforms with new episodes every Monday morning. Until next time, let peace and harmony prevail. Thank you.